man. Good morning. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. We're going live. And then just giving everybody a moment to jump on as we're transitioning from Sunday school. But peace and blessings. Amen. God bless you. As y'all jumping on, just let me know you on. I say good morning. Hallelujah. For this is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. God bless you. And when I won't be before you too long on this morning, amen, we're going to go ahead and jump into the word. Amen. First, I'm going to open up with some prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you for everybody that's logging on, Lord God, that's coming in here and receive your word on this day, Lord God. Continue to be with them. Lead them and guide them by your truth, Lord God. Deliver them. Set them free, Lord God. Break the yokes that are holding them back, Lord God. For let this be the season that you have divinely called them to walk into, that they walk out of whatever they've been going through into the freedom of you, Lord God. For what's that the Spirit of the Lord is, your word declares that is liberty. So on this day, Lord God, we will claim our freedom. We will claim our liberty. And not only that, but we will also claim our deliverance. Lord God, we thank you. For the power of your word and the, the strength and the power that your blood accomplished at the cross. We love you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to piggyback on somewhere what Sunday school was about this morning. Amen. We're going to be talking about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. We might talk about a little Peter. And and we're we're gonna be talking about uh, how do us that have been in bondage or have been bound up, how do we claim our freedom by our faith? Amen. If you if you, if you need a thought this morning, think about I'm claiming, or you can even just say it to yourself, I'm claiming my freedom by my faith. Amen. I'm not claiming my freedom based on someone else's faith. Uh, I cannot claim my freedom based off of what my grandmama faith say, but I have to claim my freedom solely dependent on my faith in him, amen, who saved me and delivered me. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to me to the third chapter of Daniel. Amen. When you get it, say amen. And we're going to start out this morning talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like I said, if you're just tuning in or logging in, God bless you. May God keep you. Uh, may his face continue to shine upon you. We're going to start in Daniel 3, and I'm going to go ahead and jump in. We're going to start in Daniel, Daniel 3, around verse number 12. Well, actually, we're going to start in number 11. And the Bible reads, And whoso falleth not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Now, what was going on is 
This was King Nebuchadnezzar doing. Amen. After he had been delivered from his tormentous dreams by Daniel. Amen. And he gave Daniel some good stuff and also set up his homeboys. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And after doing all that and even acknowledging how great their God was, he fell back into his pagan ways. Not only did Nebuchadnezzar fall back in his pagan ways, but he, he began to construct the uh, idol or image made of gold. And he said, whenever you hear the music playing, it is a decree from the king that you obey me versus anybody else. My word is law. My word is bond. And if you don't do what I say do, I'm going to throw you in a fiery furnace. Now, after all this had taken place, word got back that uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to fall down and worship this golden image which he had resurrected, which he had created, which he had formed to, to be a god to the people, an idol who they idolized and prayed to. Not only that, they made worship songs for this idol. Why? Because they wanted it to seem like it was authentic and genuine. Like something that I made and created with my own hands, I can now worship it. Why? Because I put it in place so I can worship it the way I want to. It don't tell me what I can and can't do. I mean, it's, it's something about that with, with some of the people we, we, we call our brothers and sisters in Christ today. Amen. What it is, they love the blessings of God, but they don't love the order of God. Hey Amen. They, they 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 love the they love the things that God can give them, but but they don't have a love for the Word of God. Meaning they don't. If, if the Word is hitting them in a part of their life, they think they have the ability to form God into an image or idol that they want to. Even if God say I'm against this, what well, they would go they would reform it. They would say, well, this word was written over 2,000 years ago, and God didn't change. Maybe God don't care we do this now. God don't care we do that now. But the devil is a liar. God is not an image that you can, or uh, made of gold that you can heat up when you get ready to and shape it into something that you'll feel comfortable doing. God is not pleased with your lifestyle. He's pleased with righteousness. Amen. I'm not telling everybody to walk around here with prayer shawls and, 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 and things over their self because God didn't never call us to be uh, Jewish. He called us to be holy. We're supposed to be the righteousness of God and it, and it got to a point where we want the blessings of God when we don't have no reverence for the word of God. Amen. You cannot walk in one without the other. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was the king. He made these rules. He made these regulations. But when they saw, when Jews and certain Jews that had prominence began to see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not worshiping, they sent word back to Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, man, verse 13 says, And Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That they make, uh, then they brought these men before the king. The Bible in verse 14 says, And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? How dare they? Now if ye be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the of the cornet or the flute or the harp or the sack, but of the, the psaltery and the dulcimer and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Will be, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Verse 16 reads, And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you, answer thee in this manner. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand. 
O king. In verse 18, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Amen. I'll stop right there for a moment. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Uh, God bless everyone that's jumping on. Uh, if you missed a lesson topic or if you want to just consider something, uh, you can just have this thought process that I'm claiming my freedom by my faith. Amen. I'm claiming my freedom by my faith. Amen. I can't do it based on what somebody else think, what somebody else believe. I can't depend on my wife's face. But guess what? If I'm claiming my freedom, it has to come from what I believe. It has to come from my faith alone and my personal relationship with Jesus the Christ, son of the living God. Amen. Amen. We talked about how people love the blessings of God, but not the word of God. They, 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 they love the kindness and and in the mercy and grace of God, but they don't love the order of God. Now, I, I love this passage of scripture because it says in verse 19, and then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and his form and the form of his vis uh, visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I began to think about that. I began to think about some people and some times. See, vi uh, visage is your face. Not only does it mean your face, but it means your countenance or your uh, or, or an appearance of a person. Uh, not only is it just your countenance, but countenance is the face as an indication of a mood. Not only did your mood change towards them, but now your emotions then change towards them. That means you feel a certain type of way about that person. Not only uh, your emotions and your feelings change, but guess what? Now your character begins to change. See, it's something about when your character changed, but now when your countenance changed, not that you're agitated by them. The people that you used to love, you held so in uh, regard that you gave them all type of power, but now your feelings to change towards, towards them. Your mood to change. Your emotions to change. Your character to change. Uh, not only that, but now you, you have disapproval for them. Not only disapproval, but this composure for them. They agitate you. Just a minute ago, you was praising them. In the previous chapter, you was praising them and worshiping them. But now they agitate you. See, the enemy don't care how you pray for them. When they're going through something. They don't doubt your God. They don't doubt his power when, you, when they're going through something uh, very strong in their life when they're dealing with health issues, when, they, when they're dealing with death of a family member or a friend. They don't have problems soliciting you for prayers when they're in trouble. I've even heard atheists that don't even believe in God get hit by something real and say, Lord God, have mercy on me. <laughs> but, it, but all the rest of the, the while, you don't even believe in God. Amen. Amen. But now his countenance then changed. How did his countenance change? Because if you just jump back to Daniel 2, 46, it says, the king Nebuchadnezzar fell unto his face. This is after Daniel gave him the vision, gave him a, um, an interpretation of the vision that was troubling him, the dream that was troubling Nebuchadnezzar. Second uh, Daniel 46 reads, then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshiped Daniel. Not only did he worship, he commanded that he should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. They wanted Daniel to be praised. Not only that, then the king answered unto Daniel and said, of a truth it is that your God is God of gods. And a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Seek if thou could have revealed this secret. 
seeing thou couldn't reveal this secret. Then verse 48 says, Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Remember, he was putting them over all of these Jewish people. The same ones that went and, and snitched on them when they didn't, when they weren't falling down worshiping the golden image. And Daniel requested of the king and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the providence of Babylon. So now Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, now are over the providence of Babylon while Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Now they was gotten all this place. They got all this prestige. They got all this stuff. And it's something about the enemy. When the enemy feels like he's giving you enough. Mm -hmm. When I give you enough stuff, how dare you turn your back on me? How dare you not call me out for not living righteous? How dare you call me out for not living holy? Then I'll give you the keys to that new car. Then I help you buy that house over there. Then I co-sign for this. Then I put furniture in your new home. As long as I'm blessing you, as long as I'm giving you great gifts, I'm not concerned about what comes out of your mouth. But now when I'm asking you to say something for me, when I want you to stand up for my unrighteousness, when I don't want to be held accountable, but when I want to do my own thing, worship my own God, build my own image. But now that you say you're not careful to answer me, I'm not, you're not going to not going to let your guard now. You mean you're not going to worship my gods? How dare you? That what made Nebuchadnezzar heart change towards them. That what changed his visits towards the Hebrew boys. Not only did his face begin to frown when he see him versus smile. Now his motions are all over the place. It's something about when you refuse to follow foolishness. The enemy always attack. When you refuse to walk outside of the will of God. Enemies try their best to try to put you in your place. Now, after that, in verse 19, he heated the furnace seven times hotter. Verse 20 says, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. I began to look at this verse a little harder than I. look at a lot of verses because something stuck out to me in this verse. He says he commanded that the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. The ultimate goal of the enemy right here is I have to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I have to bind them. I have to stop them because I know what they God can do. I know what they faith can do. What can I do to stop the move of God in their life? I see them going up. The units were feeding them was feeding them uh, porridge and, and things of that nature. They refused to drink the king's wine and eat the king's meat, but yet and still they was going bigger and stronger and more fuller than the rest of the Babylonians. Not only that, they, they, they had great wisdom. He even, he even spoke highly of them, how, how they're wiser than all the astrologers and all of this, all the scientists that was in Babylon. They're already smarter. They're already stronger. They're already getting healthier. What can I do to stop the blessings of God from manifesting in their life? The enemy said, I have to bind them. I had tried to get them to compromise. And since they wouldn't compromise their righteousness, when they wouldn't compromise, they walk with God. When they, when they didn't compromise their, their, their relationship with Christ. 
The only thing I got left is to bind them. I want to let you know one thing. When the enemy try to bind you, it can be mental or it can be physical. You can be bound mentally and physically. Bound means to fasten by or as in by a band. It's something that limits or restraints you. I mean, it sets limits. It can find. It frames. It, it, it puts you in a frame. You can only go this far. I will not let you go far. I won't let other people hear you speak this nonsense. I won't let other people see you walk in righteousness. Why? Because I, I told them that it's impossible for you to live a holy life. So I, I, I set up these parameters that you can go and do whatever you want to because God's grace is sufficient. So I'm going to try to put you in a box. I'm going to try to put you in a frame. You have parameters. Mo my, mo more than that, my ultimate goal is I want to terminate you. Why? Because you are affecting. You, you can affect this entire region. You can affect this entire nation. You can affect the entire culture by you living a righteous life. You don't have to be laying up with this one and laying up with that one, smoking this or drinking that. But my ultimate goal is if I can bind you up, I can stop your effect. I can stop you from going from one place to another. I can stop you. I can stop you from persuading somebody else to love God with the same type of love and vigor. I have to do something to stop this move. But it's something about the enemy. They, they, need, they finally need to realize that nothing can stop the move of God. Why? Because when it seems like that we are losing, we are still winning. Why? Because the Bible declares and tells me that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. I want to let everybody that's listening know that you have a purpose and you have a call in your life. You have been called to do something great in the earth. And when you feel the fire getting hot, amen, when you feel like you're almost right there at your breakthrough, you know that your binding will come. Something will come try to stop you, whether it be fear, whether it be resentment, whether it be a feeling of inadequacy, or you're feeling like you may not be enough. Maybe I'm not the right person. Even Moses had his mental limits when he said, I can't even talk plain. How dare you send me to go talk to Pharaoh in your stead? Lord God, I, I can't even talk right. But let him still God say, you don't have any binds on yourself. Well, I've I've already loose you. I've gave you the liberty. If you go, I'll just speak through you. Stop looking at your own uh, inadequacies. Stop looking at your own shortcomings. Even Jesus had to challenge the man in the church. He said, even though my hand is withered, I'm calling you to stretch forth in this season. See, his mental block would have had him limited. His, his mental mind would have him binded. Say, I cannot reach towards something if I don't have the substance. But yet and still, he started reaching towards this thing. Why? Because his freedom was tied up in his faith. Your faith will unlock the doors. My God. Amen. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm claiming my freedom by my faith. See, it's something about when we can claim something with our own faith, where we believe, amen. See, now Nebuchadnezzar is mad. Why? Because he could not stop the move of God. So now he said, I need my strongest. Why? Because I don't trust the God that they serve. I could send anybody to come bind them up, but I want to send my champions of the champion. I want to send the best of the best. I want to send the mighty men in my army. Why? Because no telling what they God will call them to do. No telling what God will strengthen them with in this time. Amen. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to send the best that I have. That's what the enemy does. Whenever he see you in the verge of a breakthrough, he will send the best that he have. Why? To try to bind you up. Amen. Bound up. Bind you up. Amen. Because bind means I want to secure you by tying your hands as with the rope. See, your hands represent ministry. Your hands represent work. Amen. Your hand represents grace. Amen. You got to understand that once you're moving and operating in the way that God has called you to go in, the enemy, first thing he want to do, he want to bind your hands. The Bible says that the Paul was shipwrecked and they reached the dry ground. He began automatically to work and grab sticks. And once he grabbed the stick and was throwing them on the fire, the Bible says a snake bit his hand. Why? Because he said, I want to stop your ministry. I want to stop your momentum. I want to stop you working, amen. I want to have you in one place. I want to bind you. 
But the Bible says he shook it off and kept on moving. Because he said, no matter what the enemy attacking my life, I understand that God is greater than any poison that this viper can spit out. My God is greater than any poison. Even though I'm supposed to be dead in minutes, God said, you're going to survive this thing. But what the enemy bit you with, what he thought was going to kill you, it cannot even slow you down. So don't sweat the small stuff. And everything is the small stuff concerning God. Amen. I don't know who I'm promised to, but it's time for somebody to shake it off. Somebody didn't got bit this week. Somebody didn't got hit this week. But I'm telling you right now in the spirit, it's time to shake it off. Amen. Glory be to God. What else does it mean? By I mean, I want to constrain them with legal authority. Amen. They trying to pass laws to tell you what you can and what you can't preach, saying it might be considered a hate crime. Amen. They try to hamper you and try to stop you from doing some things and they try to constrain you with legal authority. Amen. If you got a baker and you say, well, I'm just want I will not make a certain cake. Amen. For a certain couple. Amen. They say, well, it's, you're going to have to do it. Amen. Des despite of what you believe. But you got to you, but you got to stand on it. The same way that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood on it. Say, I will not conform to the ways of this world, but I'm going to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, to make something firm or a uh, committed for, to cause to have an uh, emotional attach or emotional ties that bind us. Some people try to bind you with your emotions. They try to get you on a guilt trip. They try to make you feel sorry for them. But let yo and behold, it ain't time to feel sorry for nobody. You got to call them to come up higher. So you can't keep going down low, but it's time for you to reach down and pull them up. I can't sit down and have a pity party with you. Come on. I got to strengthen you. The Bible says once you have been converted, it says go back and strengthen your brother. It didn't say go down and coddle with him. Go down and lay down and do all of this. He said, no, you got to you got to strengthen him. Why? Because he need to come up where you are. If his legs are weak, the Bible says, amen, one day the man of God was going into the church, amen, to pray. And they saw somebody lame at the gate. And he said, look on us, amen, silver and gold have I none, but such I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. They did not get down on on the ground and pray with him, but they called him up higher. And they said, The man that was lame from birth, that they never took a step in his life, God will accelerate some things in this season if you got enough faith to get up. Amen. I prophesy right now, I dare you to get up. For the Bible says even, even children need to learn how to walk and take baby steps. Matter of fact, most children crawl before they walk. But this man that have never walked in his life, he jumped up to his feet and was leaping and praising God. And he went into the church, amen. How come a man that never took a step in his life, even if somebody that had a stroke as an adult, they have to learn how to walk all over, one foot at a time, one step at a time. But this man that have never walked before in his life, took the word of God to his heart and had enough faith yes. to step out of that bondage that was crippled, to step out of that bondage which was a lameness. And he jumped up and shouted, amen, unto the Lord, singing praises. I'm talking about I'm claiming my freedom by my faith. No longer will I be a slave to this wheelchair. No longer will I be a slave to sit down all day. But lo and behold, if the man of God say I can have it, amen, I believe I can have it. Amen. I don't know if y'all believe me. Y'all type, I can have it. Amen. I believe I can have it. Amen. I know what the word of God said. I can have it. I believe it. Amen. Well, he got the mighty man to bind him up. Amen. He wants to hamper them from free movement or natural action. I don't want them to move freely through the kingdom. Why? Because they might spread some of that Jesus juice. They might spread some of that stuff they got on them. They might spread some of that faith. Amen. They might spread some of that doctrine. They might spread some of that word. But if I can just tie them up, if I can hamper them from freely moving about, if I can stop them from moving in the natural actions that they have, if I can hinder them, if I, if, if I can just... Got them, stop them from freely operating. If I could exert some type of restraint around them, I got to stop them. Amen. I, I see them. They, they want to try to stop them. Amen. What does it say? Nebuchadnezzar called this mighty man 
that were in his army to bind them. See, it was more important for him to bind them to, to do anything else. I got to stop them. I got to terminate them. Then these men were bound in their coats and their hoses in their hats and their other garments. And they were cast into the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent. See, he wanted to do this thing fast. Amen. He said, I got to stop this fast. Why? Because they might embolden somebody else to stand up for what's Come right. On. They might call somebody else to stand on holiness. Jesus. They might call somebody else to stand on righteousness. I don't have to bow my head to bail. I don't have to bend over. I don't have to do this. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to stand for the righteousness of God. I will not compromise my relationship to appease you. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care if you're the president of the United States, but I believe the word of God. And the Bible says in 22, and since it was urgent, I got to do this thing fast. See, there's something about when you start speaking truth. All while you out there living your best life, we all call all this nonsense. But when you start speaking righteous, now they want to come quick. Now they want to try to cancel your social media. Now they want to try to try to shut you up. Why? Because they want to stop your reach. Why? They want to bind you. For the commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot. And the flame of the fire slew the men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, the fire was so out of control. I mean, there's something about if you know anything about fire. See, I love the barbecue a little bit. And when you put the wood on the fire, amen, they, you close the door. And then as the, as the room heats up, you know, fire needs oxygen to live. But when you open the door, where you got the firewood in the smoke chamber. The fire jumps out at you with the heat as you begin to put more logs on. So it was so hot and so compressed in there that when he opened the door, it slew the men that was sent down there to put Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. Did y'all read that last part? It says they fell down bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. They fell down bound. Whatever the enemy has tried to use, amen. To bind you up in this season. Knowing that when the heat gets turned up and you feel like you're still bound, amen. Just go to verse 24. They were still tied up. They still had shackles on them. For their arms, their legs, everything was tied up. They was bound. It was no way they can get into a, po a position where they can pray. That's what Nebuchadnezzar thought. It wasn't, no, it, it wasn't, I, I want to put them in their bond. Why? Because I don't want them to cry out to his name. I don't even want them to say, thank you, Lord God. I don't even want to hear no worship from them. I don't want to hear nothing. But I want them to go in there bound. The same way we bound them up on the outside. Tie the ropes tight. Amen. Sometimes you might be in a place where you feel like you cannot move. You cannot get your breakthrough. You cannot get free. It, it, it seems like you're still in the same loop. Amen. But the Bible says in verse 24, But then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished. And he rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. When verse 25 rolled up, he had to begin to himself, I thought we had put a lasso on this thing. I thought we had bind them up. When we threw them in there, I know the fire was so high they killed the mighty men, but yet and still they still survived, amen. Not only did they survive the fire, but the same bounds that we placed on them, the same restraint 
constrictions that we put on them, the same legal constraints that we put on them, the same uh, hamper from free movement that we put on them, the same uh, situation that we put on them, they was able to, that they weren't even able to move freely. But now I see down in verse 25, the same ones that were bound, they wouldn't come out the fire loose, but they got loosed in the fire. I don't care what you may be feeling or experiencing right now. If your life have been turned upside down, if you feel the fire right now in your life from every direction, know that your breakthrough is already now at hand. Only thing you got to do is have faith in God. For the Bible says in the midst of the fire, they was walking free. They say the bounds were loose, amen. What the enemy tried to tie you down with was lost in the fire. What the enemy tried to kill you with birth you into your freedom. What the enemy used to try to destroy your life, amen. Even if he tried to assassinate your character, he tried to talk about you, spread rumors. He tried to lie. He tried to gossip. They tried to destroy your name to, to, hamp to hamper your effectiveness or your freeness to move and operate. But God say, in the midst of the fire, you can claim your freedom. Amen. When the smoke cleared, amen. The Bible even talks about when the smoke clear, amen. Good God Almighty, y'all. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. Me. But they was freed in the fire. They were still in the midst of it. And they got their freedom. See, a lot of people think the freedom come when they walked out. But they got their freedom when they got thrown in. Because they was thrown in and bound up, shackled up, tied up, amen, wrapped up into the world, wrapped up into different things, amen, whatever the enemy tried to put on them. But glory be to God, he said, in the midst of the fire, amen, he said, I see them loose and they ain't even walking by themselves. See, I didn't want them to be able to take a step, amen. Why? Because walking and stepping is prophetic, amen. Because you're going from one position to a next. But I want to try to take all of their power. But letting, but lo and behold, I see a fourth one in there walking with them, amen. And they walking around and they don't, they don't even to be harm. That harm is no harm has came to them. Know that the enemy don't even got the power or authority to kill you. No matter how hard it may be. That's why he try to bind your mind to try to get you to kill yourself. Take them pills. Pull the trigger. Life is too hard, but the devil is a lie. Whenever you feel like it's too hard, your breakthrough is already there. God said, I have made a way of escape for you. If you love him, know that God is your way of escape. I love that one so much. He said he answered it. He said he see a fourth one. A fourth man loose. Walking in the midst of the fire. And none of them are hurt. They're not even phased by the heat. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Mm. Now I'm talking about the son of God. Amen. Why? Because Jesus will show up. When our faith show up. The reason being Jesus had to make a cameo. Jesus wasn't even born yet. But he left eternity to step into time. To address the faith that these men had in their life. Thank God Almighty. It's something about I know it ain't the time for the second coming of Christ. Not yet. But it is so close. But do you understand that your faith can cause God to come down in the midst of your situation? He come down in the midst of your struggle, your fight, your war, whatever you're going through. Jesus can come right down, right now in the midst. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. And the princes and the governors and the captains and the king's counselors. All of these were the Jewish ones that was mad that these guys had got set over them uh, in regarding the providence of Babylon. All these ones were the ones that was snitching and couldn't wait to see them die. See, sometimes people that are around you, they're the ones that snitching on you. Why? Because their ultimate goal is they want to see you die. They want to see you fall. 
They, they, they want to see a man of God or a woman of God fall. So guess what? They'll try to set you up. They'll say, look, let, let Adam on the balcony. Play the music now so we can see what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. The enemy will try to set you up in seasons such as this. They saw these men whose bodies, the fire had no power. Nor was the hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed. Nor the smell of fire had even passed on them. Amen. The Bible says when the smoke cleared, they didn't even smell like smoke. Amen. The hairs on their head or their arm weren't even singed. See, it's something about when you're walking with God that no matter what the enemy try to do to destroy you, for the Bible declares that weapons, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Amen. You got to understand and stand on that. No weapon that is formed. The Bible said it wasn't no, the Bible never said a weapon wasn't going to form. But it said when it is formed, it will not prosper. It will not do what it was intended to do. Okay. Amen. But what it was intended to do, it'll end up birthing you into something greater. You'll go from great glory to glory, from faith to faith. It'll cause you to go higher in God. Amen. I love that so much. When you're in the midst of your bondage, your faith can set you free. Your faith can set you free. God is so much bigger and so much greater than whatever the enemy is throwing at you. I don't know what you're currently going through, amen. I don't care what you're being tied down with, but know that whoever is trying to fight against you, they're not fighting against you, but they're fighting against God. See, sometimes we think it's up for us to fight when the only thing we got to do is have faith. For I'm claiming my freedom by my faith. Hey Amen. I'm closing. I'm not, I'm not going to even get to it. I don't even think I should jump in it. Uh, y'all read this at y'all a long time. This is Acts 12, 5 through 11. Hey Amen. Even talking about Ephraim and Manassas. So you're not going to even look like what you've been through. There's not going to be no evidence of the things that you had to go through and the things you had to endure to reach the place that you are right now. Amen. That Acts 12, 5 through 11 is talking about Peter, amen. After they had killed uh, one of the disciples, amen, it pleased the Jews. So guess what? Herod saw fit to vex Psalm certain in the church. So it was certain people in the church that King Herod wanted to destroy, amen. It was uh, Herod wanted to destroy. It was certain of them that he wanted to make sure that he made an example out of. I got to kill them. Why? Because they are too powerful in the church. They are too anointed. They are too gifted. But if I can just get them to turn their back on Jesus and come into the and come into the world, if they just leave him, they'll be all right. But there are some people that are just in the church that I have to get out of the church. Amen. Peter was then kept in prison. Amen. And, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. See, we was talking about Peter being thrown into the inner jail. Not only was Peter in the inner jail, amen, but Herod was going to call for him to kill him the very next day. But the next day never got there. Well, the next day got there, but Peter just went there. <laughs> Amen. For the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with chains. Man, we're talking about bounds again. We're talking about getting bounded up, getting roped up and chained up. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And before the angel of the Lord came unto him, a light shined in the prison. And he spoke Peter, smoked Peter on the right side. I mean, on the side. And raised him up saying, arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. See, if you got enough faith to just move, when he say move, things begin to happen. He didn't pick no lock. He didn't have a master key. But he said, I want you to get up or rise up quickly. And as soon as he got up, the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said unto him, gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. He said, I want you to get up and get dressed. Why? Because we got a destination. We got somewhere to go. Not only that, and so he did. And then he said unto him, cast thy garments upon thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And was not that it was true which was done by the angel. 
but though he saw a vision and when they were past the first and the second ward, they mean the enemy that thought they had him bound up and shackled up. They were sound asleep while he was walking straight past them. Hey Amen. They just guard dogs, but they sleep. I mean, they mean they can't even touch you. They can wake up if they wanted to. Why? Because if God ordained you to get your deliverance, you're going to have your deliverance. Amen. And he went out and followed him and was not this done by the angel. And when they were passed by the first and second ward, they came into the iron gate that leaded unto the city. Now, it's something about the iron gate, amen. The iron gate was there to keep other forces from coming in. It was the it was the stronghold of the city. It was the fortifiedness of the city. It was the the strong place, amen. Uh, not a wooden door, but a metal door. See, back then they used to burn down the wooden doors and hit them with battering rams, but they had an iron door to make sure nobody came in. And he leaded him to the iron door, which leaded into the city. But the Bible says, which opened to them of his own accord. That means the iron door opened up for them, amen. Without anybody moving any chains, without anybody moving no counterweights and balances to make the big heavy doors open. They said they opened up his own accord and they went out and they passed on through one street and for with the angel departed from him and Peter was come to himself and said, now I know of a certain surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and for all the expectations of the people of the Jews. See, the Jews was happy when one of the disciples got killed and they wanted to kill Peter. But guess what? When the enemy had Peter bound in the midst of the jail, his faith in the word of God, his obeying the word of God. Not only that, I want y'all to know that in the midst of your uh, uh, while you're still in prison. See, he was still in prison when his deliverance came. Why? Because the doors open at his own accord. I don't care what doors that you may have been tr having trouble with going through. God say, I am opening doors for you in this season. I'm not, I'm not opening doors because of your power, your might. But he said, I'm going to open this door and it's only accessible to, through you by your faith. Faith can open doors. Jesus said, I am the door. That deliverance came from faith, amen. The shackles fell off him by faith and by obeying the word of God. Not only did they come off, but he was able to walk out of jail free. Second Corinthians 3 and 17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Go where the spirit of the Lord is and you will get your freedom. You don't have to worry about trying to break free, break out. Why? Your faith going to cause it to break out. Your faith going to cause doors to open. You've been waiting on some doors to open. You've been waiting to go through some places. You seem like you've been stuck in this place. It seems like you've been bound for so long. But God has said, just keep having faith. And when I send a word, you obey the word and watch the doors open up. God said, I can open up doors no man can shut, and I can shut doors no man can open. But you got to have faith and believe in God that I'm claiming my freedom by my faith. Hey, Amen. I won't be, hey, y'all, I'm finna let y'all go. Hey, Amen. I want y'all to go and enjoy some barbecue. Hey, Amen. Stay away from the people houses that use a lot of light and fluid, and you can't taste the meat. <laughs> you just taste light and fluid. But I want y'all to just claim y'all freedom on this day. For you don't have to be bound up any longer. Know that your faith is wrapped up and tied up in Christ Jesus. Why? Because the Bible just told us in 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. Now this Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You have your freedom. You have your liberty. Go be a blessing to someone else. Amen. I love you all. I can't wait to see and hear from y'all on Wednesday. I know we were supposed to be in the house this morning, but me and Prophet just had some business to handle out of town. Amen. But we will be back shortly. Amen. So I love you all. Y'all keep the faith. Know that God loves you with an everlasting love. And if you need anything from God, only thing you got to do is say, Lord God, I'll give you my life. I tried it my way for long enough. What I want to do, Lord God, is I want to turn away from the things that cause me to walk away from you. Lord God, as I search for you, if I run after you, continue to lead me by your spirit. 
Let your word become a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all the thing you have to do this morning is say, Lord God, Jesus, I believe you came to this earth for my sins. I believe you died on the cross and rose up on the third day, Lord God. And now you see that at the right hand of the Father, which is in heaven. I thank you for that sacrifice you made for me by your blood. I know that if I'm in you, I'm a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. I am no longer bound to the things that had me bound up. But I am free to worship you, Lord God. Thank you for inviting me in. Thank you for becoming my father. Continue to lead me and guide me, Lord God. If you need anything from word of praise, begin to just send us a message. You want to some pray, you, you want you want to pray together, we can do that. If, if you want to fast together, we can do that. If you need some scriptures, some life scriptures, some 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 things that'll help you walk stronger. If you want to, if you just need want to know what it's all about, how do I be a Christian? How do I be a follower of Christ? How do I grow stronger in this thing? I, I may be a little weak now, but how do I get strength? Amen. Feel free to speak with us. We'll, we'll go through a uh, new membership training, not new membership training, but just how to live for Christ. Something very simple. It's not real big. It's not hard. But know that Christ has made us free. And man, we love you all. Y'all be blessed. Like I said, thank you to my apostle. Amen. Apostle Bobby J. Banks Sr. Amen. And Prophetess Banks. Thank, thank you for my covering. Amen. Thank you for my overseer. Amen. I also thank God. Amen. For my my wife, Prophetess Gray. Amen. Who is always beside me, praying for me, us sowing and speaking into my life. And thank you for Elder Rawls. Amen. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you for even uh, everybody that's on here, amen, because the iron sharp and iron, like we said this morning in Sunday school, amen. And we just love everybody. We want to see everybody saved, sanctified, filled with the precious Holy Ghost. And we want people to go farther than they have ever went before. Amen. There is much more to this than just preaching, amen. But God has called us to do some awesome things in this world. So whatever has been binding us and stopping us from moving freely, we claim our freedom by our faith. Amen. God bless you. And I can't wait to see you all again.